I'm going to do a video that's not uh, really related to the outbound build. Uh, this is something I did to my Cessna 150 uh, during the annual several months ago. It's the uh, va Lycoming valve wobble test. It's something that uh, I wanted to do on the engine. The engine's got about 650 hours or so on it. And uh, Lycoming recommends this every, I think, 400 hours. And um, I didn't. I didn't really see, there's a service bulletin which explains how to do it, but I didn't really see any videos or anything. And I thought it might be helpful to uh, put this together and just kind of show how I did it. I'm doing the annual here on my 150. And one of the things that I'd like to check is the exhaust valve wobble. This is something that Lycom recommends checking. I forget the interval. It's like maybe 400 hours or something. I'm not quite sure on that, but it's something they want you to check because the valve guides can wear and then you get a sloppy uh, exhaust valve in there. So I'm gonna go through the process here and do this. Um, I am not an AMP, however, this is being done under the supervision of my AMP. So I just wanna get that out of the way right away. To be doing this, I have this test uh, fixture with a dial indicator made by Saito Tool Engineering Corporation. Uh, it is made specifically to test valve wobble on parallel and angle valve like homing cylinders. So I've removed the valve cover here. I didn't show that part. That's pretty self-explanatory. Next, what I need to do is pull the rocker shaft, pull the exhaust rocker, get that out of the way. And then I can go in and remove the um, valve spring, the uh, rotator cup, of course, and uh, the retaining clips and get all that out of the way so I've got just an exhaust valve there. Um, but before I do all of that, uh, I want to take the spark plug out and I put my, we've already done number three here, put my um, fitting in here that we use for uh, differential pressure testing. And uh, what I wanna do, or compression testing, I should say, uh, what I wanna do is take that out, stick this in here because I'm gonna wanna pressurize the cylinder to keep the exhaust valve from uh, pushing into the cylinder too far and potentially, you know, having it drop down in there it could be a, make for a bad day. So uh, let me do that. I'll get the spark plug pulled, get this in, then I can continue on with the rest of the work. Okay, I've got the spark plug removed. I've got this fitting in here. Now I can go ahead and I'll do the rest of the work. I'm gonna pull this rocker shaft now. I've positioned the crankshafts in a manner that, there we go. I wanna position it in a manner that the lifters are not pushing on the push rods and, and attempting to actuate the springs to keep as little pressure as possible on it. Take a little pick here and I just pick the plastic cap off. This is a little tool that I made out of some HDPE rod uh, just so that I can use as a drift to get that rocker shaft out. Kind of get it started there. Gonna take the push rod out so it's not dripping oil on me. Gonna remove the valve spring now. 7 16 quarter inch drive socket will slip right in there, no problem. Valve spring compressor. And now before I do this, I'm going to pressurize the cylinder. I'm gonna to wanna to stand clear because I don't know the position of the cylinder at the moment. It's gonna to wanna to find its equilibrium at bottom dead center. And uh, prop's probably gonna turn a little bit, so I'm gonna do this slowly. All right, I've oriented the prop in the, or the crankshaft in position such that I've got both valves, exhaust and intake, are sealed in the head. Now I can go ahead and uh, bring some pressure in. 
Don't need much, maybe 30, 40 pounds is gonna hold that valve in place. I got 40 pounds there. And we'll just kind of move the spring and make sure, yeah, the valve is sealed up in there. So that's all we're gonna need is about 40 pounds. At this point, I'll go ahead and um, remove the, well, first thing I need to do is remove the uh, rotator cup. Now get in here and move the retainers. There we go. And now the spring. Yeah, we've got good sealing valve here. We're not gonna lose it in the cylinder. Now I can go ahead and uh, bolt up the fixture. First thing to do is install the, they call this the split gauge. It's just a shaft that has a counter bore in there that is the OD of the valve, uh, the valve itself. And it just slips over there and it's split so that you can tighten it down with a set screw. I'm gonna orient it such that the screw is facing to the front. And I'm just gonna push it on there and just give it a light little clamp on it. Good. Now that I've got this on, there's no fear of me pushing the valve in too far. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the pressure from inside the cylinder. Okay, the pressure's been relieved. Now I should be able to move the valve. I'm just gonna rotate it and make sure that it's freely rotating, which it's doing quite nicely. And I'm gonna kind of just pull back on it and rotate against the valve seat, make sure I don't feel anything catching. It's got some pretty smooth motion there, so that's all good. Uh, now let's go ahead and bolt up the fixture itself. Test fixture is just held in place with a couple quarter by 20 screws. Let's put this one in place here first, loosely. And I'll push the dial indicator down bring this up and attach this other screw. These just screw into the cylinder head where the rocker cover attaches. Tighten it up. Don't need to torque it, I just need it to be tight enough that the fixture is not gonna move. Okay. We wanna orient this back to where the screw is facing to the front on the split gauge. And I'm just going to visually check and make sure the dial indicator is hitting the split gauge at approximately the center, which coming to look underneath, it is. If we have a look here. It's hitting right there on the center, so that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same tool I used to push out the rocker shaft, just a piece of HDPE. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna wedge up against the fixture and push up the valve. And I'm gonna zero out my indicator. So that's zero with the valve pushed up in the maximum direction it can move. I'm being careful not to apply pressure to the split gauge. That can move and that's gonna give you erroneous readings here. You wanna only be pushing on on the valve. Let me run that. There we go, we're zeroed out there, okay? Now I'm gonna come up here on the top of the valve and push down and take my reading. The maximum reading, uh, allowable reading is 30. So I'm within range, however there is, there is some slop there but within the allowable range. These cylinders have around six, about 670 hours, if I recall, somewhere around there, I'll have to look. So I wouldn't expect to see that much wear uh, at only 670 hours, um, but Lycoming does have you check this, uh, check these at these intervals, because I guess it can happen. So uh, I will want to keep track of that. 
Uh, number three, when I measured it, was 18. And I'm just writing it on the valve cover as well as my compression test numbers so that when I do it next time, I can look and see what it was previously and I can kind of get a trend or a history. So now that we've checked that, it's basically just the reverse of what I did, putting it all back together. At this stage, I'm gonna go ahead and pressurize the cylinder before I take off the split gauge, since at that point, the valve would be free to move. There we go. Take that off. Now I need to um, put the spring and all the pieces and bits and pieces on that back in there. Now the retainers, they can be a little tricky. What I found is they're easiest to put in on the bottom side of the valve. The first one and then with a pick flip it around to the top and stick the other one in on the bottom again. The first one is in place. Now I'm going to take the pick and just rotate that around to the top. Hundred and eighty degrees. Now I've got a little more clearance and ability to get that other one in there. Okay, retainers are in. Never forget the rotator cap. Could cause you some issues. Now we're ready to slide the, uh, insert the rocker, well, insert the push rod, <laughs> insert the rocker, and then slide the rocker shaft over. Okay, I no longer need pressure in the cylinder, so I'll remove the air from that. Now, it can be a little tricky getting the rocker in here because the rocker is going to have to push against the valve spring, and that's going to be tough to do to get the shaft to align up. So I made this tool. I made this tool here. It's just a piece of angle that I've machined a couple half circles in, and they fit over the valve. Uh, the valve's right there. And they just thread into the cylinder head. One, one at the front, one at the rear. I'm just going to tighten them each side a little bit. I don't want to asymmetrically load it. And what this is going to do is this is going to compress the valve springs and allow me to have a free rocker shaft because the rockers are not going to be providing any tension on the shaft. I'm just going to go enough to give me a little bit of clearance here. See, I can wiggle the intake rocker pretty easily. That should be enough. Take the rocker, slip the rocker in. And I can see I'm gonna have to go a little bit more. It may have the crank in a not optimal position. Let me, yeah. Oh yeah, I've got the tripod in the wrong spot. I need to move the prop right there. Let's see if I can get over the prop. There we go. Now it should fit. That crank was just in a position. It was wanting to actuate the exhaust valve there. That should get me, yep, there we go. I'll put the cap back on and I'll remove this tool little at a time again so I don't asymmetrically load it. Now 
That's it. We've got, we'll just do an overall check now. We do have the push rod back in place. We've got the uh, valve spring, the retainers, the rotator cup, everything is in there. The rocker shaft is back in, the plastic end plug is in place. Uh, this is now ready to receive the gasket and the rocker cover. I'll write on the rocker cover the values that we measured on this one, and then I'll move on to numbers two and four.